Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. In this occasion, I would like to share something about the basic concept of algebra. Uh, the coverage will be like this. We begin with talking about the real number system. Then it is followed by rules of algebra and other things associated with it. Real numbers consist of two, rational and irrational. Rational means the numbers can be made as a ratio, like a, a per b, while irrational numbers can. Moreover, rational number can be expressed as an integer or a fraction of two integers. To make the concept clear, let's see the real number line here. First, we have integers the negative integers, 0, and the positive integers. All the integers are rational numbers, thus can be expressed as a ratio or fraction. Look at this. 1 is 3 per 3, 2 per 2, 1 per 1, or 10 per 10. The same is true for 2 and minus 1, which can be expressed as this. Other than the fractions for the integers, we have fractions between the integers such as this, 3 per 4, 5 per 4, minus half, and so on. Fractions can be expressed as decimal fraction, whether it is finite decimal fraction such as 0 0.5, 100.25, 3.75, or infinite decimal fraction such as this. The three dots indicate that the digit 3 in the first example or the recurring number 1428571 repeated indefinitely. Decimal fraction with recurring number like this indicates that the fraction is a rational number or can be made as a ratio of two integers. 33.33 dot 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 is a ratio of 100 per 3, whereas 3.1428 dot 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 is a ratio of 22 per 7. Finally, there is a case when the infinite decimal fraction has no recurring number. For instance, square root of 2 or p, the circle diameters, these are the examples of irrational numbers. Those numbers cannot be made a ratio of two integers. But please notice that between two integers, there is always at least one irrational number. Okay, now let's talk about the rules of algebra. Here's the common rules of algebra. You must have learned it since in junior high school, maybe. They look simple and may be less meaningful if the application is just inserting numbers for A, B, and C. For example, this commutative law, of course, it applies to 1 plus 2, which would be equal to 2 plus 1. But it doesn't look interesting, does it? But how if you're given these equations to solve for x? What will you do? Rearranging the left side of the equation to become like this? What do you think? Does it help? Well, it seems now factoring is easier done than before, isn't it? So here, the trick is just change the position of minus 8 with the x squared minus 2x inside the bracket. We're using the commutative law. Another example, how can we come up with this? Simple. We use the rule number 6 here. Then, using the rule number 7, we come up with this solution. From just two examples here, I just want to emphasize that the basic rules of algebra are essentials in math. It may help us find solution using another mathematical theorem. It may also simplify things that allow us to withdraw a conclusion or even make a postulate and theory. Other rules in algebra are fraction rules. Again, simplification and solution in math can be made by using one or more of the rules. Remember this, then this. How can we simplify this? Cancel the common factor A minus B. Basically, the cancellation is done by dividing both sides of the equation with the same term, which is a minus b. 
As long as a minus b as denominator is not equal to zero, then the cancellation can be made as rule number one tells us. How about the two simplification here? Both are wrong. In the first one, there is no common factor between the numerators and the denominators. xy is the denominator for both 2x and 3y, so 2x plus 3y cannot be divided separately. In the second case, of course x squared plus 2x is one denominator expression, which together dividing the x. So again, x squared and 2x cannot be separated. Lastly, it's important to note that expressions like this, 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 and this are called algebraic expression. Forming the algebraic expression, we have the so-called terms. We have three terms in this expression, and in each term, there's always a numerical coefficient. We again have three. In the term xy squared, implicitly we have one as numerical coefficient. Summation or deduction can be made between terms of the same type. In our example here, minus 5x squared y and 7yx squared are both the same type. Only their numerical coefficients that are different. So if we sum them up, we get 2x squared x square y. Knowing what is and how to form the algebraic expressions are so important in order to address and solve a specific quantity problem. We can use mathematical theorems to solve the problem only if the problem is already translated into a mathematical or algebraic expression. The letter used surely can be any letter, not limited to A, B, X, and Y. If I buy three books and one pencil, how can I express my spending mathematically, for instance? After replacing the information with letter, my spending will be expressed like this. The same is true for the second case. Since cost per unit is total cost per total output x, then average cost is expressed as c per x. Fixed cost won't change no matter how many output is produced. So it's just f. On the other hand, variable cost changes following the change in number of production. That's why if c is the variable cost per unit of output, then cx is the variable cost when x unit is being produced. So we get the last expression on the right, which is that after the algebraic simplification.